You like them? <laughs> Exquisite. I'd heard a whisper about your collection. That's why I asked if I could present it yourself, May. Oh, not at all. I'm only too happy to show them to you. They're magnificent. This piece in particular, I think. Ah. Etruscan, about 450, 475 B.C. Tarquinian, I'd say. Not from the tomb of Triclinium. Correct, in every detail. Such expert knowledge. Are you a collector, Mr. Wyndham? Oh, in a modest sort of way. I love beautiful things. Well, here. Take it. It's a gift. No, I couldn't possibly. Please. But I can't. Something of such great value. It's a copy. One of several I had made. Uh, I keep the original elsewhere. But it's a good copy, don't you agree? Oh, yes. Now I think it's time we went ashore. I wouldn't want my guests to arrive and not be there to greet them. Shall we go? Delighted you can make it tonight. You're looking very well. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Good evening. Hello, David. Good to see you again. Thank you. I'm a bit underdressed, I'm afraid. Oh, don't worry about that. That's no problem. Just as long as you're here. Why don't you mingle, have fun, and we'll talk later, okay? Oh, George. What a surprise. And Thelma. <laughs> in brick dust with a bunch of flowers in this hand and a ridiculous, enormous bell pull thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand you. I don't understand the sense of your humor. In fact, I don't relate to you at all. Martin. David, I don't think I'll see you tonight. No, no, as a matter of fact, the uh, invitation came as a bit of a surprise to me, too. I've only met our host once before. Then it looks as if just about everybody in the island is here. I had no idea that you knew Hellman. I don't, not really. Um, he's a friend of my brother's. Really? Well, Barry never mentioned him. Still, why should he, I suppose? Well, how are you, then? Well, I'm fine. Sure? No more problems? You mean, am I imagining things? I never was. No, of course not. <laughs> Sorry, how rude of me. Georgia, this is David. Hello. How do you do? Sin tripasi le charmo, che ha oru salmo. E si ne bipori gusi, sa pote na mamu.
Oh, Let me help you. No, no, no. I want a little of everything and a lot of cavity. I think you'll enjoy it, David. It's very special. Oh, and uh, when you're finished, bring the plates over to the girl with the striped dress. I, I just wanted to tell you that uh, that girlfriend of Morrison's, apparently, she's dropped out of sight, too. But she's got cousins, a lot of them. Uh, one in particular runs a garage up Trudis Way. Now, it just could be that Morrison's there. Anyway, Travis and Olson are going to check the place out tomorrow. I startled you? A little. It's a good party. Interesting people. Too many, perhaps. Do you like it? Very much. May I ask where you got it? Good night, Andrea. Good, Good night, Joseph. Good night. Nice seeing you again. Oh, you're not leaving already. It's early still. Working day tomorrow. I have to be on the site by six. Lovely evening. Enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you for asking. Well, I'm glad you came. Hope to see you again sometime. I hope so. Goodbye.
down. Hello, Eric. Gone into business on your own, then? Hey! What? Uh, how did you...? A little bird told me. Rather beautiful one, as a matter of fact. What little bird? Oh, come on. I've seen the necklace. What about the two other little... Trinkets that are missing, huh? Trinkets? I, you I... couldn't wait, could you? You and Barry. So what else do you expect? There were seven of us when we found that place. Ted Willett, Jack Ransom, Dusty Miller, Alexis Iliadis, Barry, me and you. We'll all keep our mouths shut, you said. It'll take time, but stay still. And I'll find a buyer, you said. So we did. And look what happened. Twelve months later, four of them are dead. Ted, Jack, Dusty, all had accidents. And Iliadis conveniently ups and kills himself. But Barry and me, we thought that was just too much of a... Coincidence. Pity about that. It was bound to happen sooner or later, I suppose. It was Barry's idea. He sold the sapphires. Who to? I don't know. All he told me was that he was wanted a buyer that you've got lined up. <laughs> was he? <laughs> Underestimated him. He set up the deal. I was in a picked up the cash. I never got more than a smell of it. I got nothing for the necklace. But you know that's the truth. There's a 50,000 Barry pulled in for the jewels. It's yours. All yours. Where is it? Baby Collier's got it. I found it in his apartment. I had my hands on it. He came in. I spit the bundle. I couldn't get clear with it. It's still there. You can have it. Every penny of it. It's all yours. Why not? Fifty thousand is fifty thousand, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and you won't be needing it. No.
Do you want a drink? You want to take me home? Yes, immediately. <laughs> you all right now? I'm fine, thank you. Are you off now, David? Ah, yes, it looks like it. I take it the young lady's ankle's better now, right? Oh, she's fine. It's okay. Pleased to hear that. <laughs> well, thank you both for very much for coming. No, no, thank you for inviting me. I've had a great time. Uh, my pleasure. Excuse me for a moment, will you? I'll let you know the moment the boys can come up with that. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I want Morrison on the yacht tomorrow. Is that clear? Yes, sir.
Maria around? It's okay. We're friends of Mr. Morrison's. You know where he is? Maybe he doesn't understand English. He understands. Where is Maria? Oh, okay. Πρέπει να διερευνηθεί η υπόθεση και να πάρουμε του ενόχου. Yes, what do you want? I want to talk to someone. Well, Inspector Dimas. Is Inspector Dimas here? Maybe, maybe not. But he's a very busy man. Oh. You have something to report. I wish to talk to Inspector Dimas. Why? I am worried about a friend of mine. I think something may have happened to him. You think? So, tell me about it. Inspector Dimas. Why him in particular? Because he's the boss here, no? Huh. One of them. And because my friend mentioned his name to me. This friend of yours. Who is he? He's an Englishman. His name is Morrison. Eric Morrison. Disappeared. He ran up and left you, is that it? No, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> Why not? He loves me. And you haven't seen him since last night, you say? No. Where? That's not long. But he said he would be back in three or four hours at the most. And uh, where did he say he was going? To see someone on business. Mm -hmm. Where? I do not know. He did not tell me that. <laughs> And this, um, this business, what was it about? To do with his work, I suppose. So, after he finished, he had a few drinks. Anyway, he went out on the town and stayed out all night. Huh? Nothing unusual in that. It, it happens all the time. A man, huh? Oh, you know what they're like. He would not have stayed out, not last night anyway. He would have come straight back as he said he was going to. Well, what makes you so sure? Because he was afraid. Oh, afraid? Uh, afraid of what? Not being seen. But he went out last yeah, night. He had to go, as I told you, on business. It was important. But he would not have stayed away any longer than he had to. That is why I took him to the house of my cousin, so that he would be safe. Safe from what? Someone has tried to kill him twice. No, he told you this. Yes. Well, who tried to kill him and why? I don't know. And I don't think that Eric knows either. 
Twice, you say? Once when he was on his own, and before that with a man called David Collier. Good afternoon, Mr. Collier. Hello again. Yes, now why didn't I think of that? Come in. Bit of a switch, this. You coming to see me? Decided to deport me, have you? <laughs> I'm looking for Eric Morrison. Well, well, welcome to the club. Why well, the sudden interest? When I wanted you to talk he to him. He has disappeared. No, he's on leave. Mm. Up in the mountains with his girlfriend. But yesterday evening he drove off somewhere, and then she hasn't seen him since. She's worried about him. Yeah, with good cause, I'd say. Yes, perhaps. She confirmed your story about the shooting incident at Trimaclini Bridge. Ah! Morrison told her so about it. So you believe it. me? You finally believe me? About that? Yes. But not about the money. The woman, Helene, Haralambos, the barman, Basilios, that I was attacked, that my brother was murdered. You still don't believe any of that? Where were you last night, Mr. Collier? At a party. You can prove that? Yeah, of course. What time did you leave? I don't know, about midnight. And you came straight back here? Yes. No, there was a girl. I took her home. Look, why the cross-examination? I don't know where Morrison is any more than you do. I wish I did. I haven't seen him since... Since the day you had a fight with him. How did you know about that? <laughs> it was reported to me. Oh, of course. Hmm? What was the fight about? Oh, no. If you can't accept the other things I've told you, there's no way you're going to believe what that was all about. Tell me. Ah, <sighs> all right. I came back here and found Morrison with a briefcase. The one with the money in it. The one the mysterious woman I invented gave me. The one that was stolen from me in the attack that I imagined. You know, a fairy story of mine. Go on. What's the point? Well, I'm listening, aren't I? Morrison claims he found the briefcase in the bedroom. And he didn't. Well, I suppose he must have done, but I don't know who the hell put it there. It certainly wasn't me. So? So I tried to persuade him that the best thing to do was to take her to you, but he wouldn't go along with that. He shoved me out of the way, and the next thing I know is that we're knocking the hell out of each other in the street. And the local law moved in and broke us up. And what happened to the briefcase? Ah, yes. Now we come to the bit you're not going to swallow. When the fight started, the briefcase was there on the floor, open. When I came back up here with one of your lot, it had gone. Morrison took it. No, he pulled out empty-handed. Then who go. did? I don't know. So why didn't you tell me about this at the time? You've got to be joking. After everything else that happened? After you having as good as told me less than an hour before that I was crazy? Oh, yeah, she'd have really gone for a story like that, wouldn't you? You don't believe me now, do you? God knows what your reaction would have been then. My guess is you'd have had me committed. You might still, for all I know. Do you mind if I look around? I don't suppose I can stop you. Oh, yes, Mr. Collier. Easily. Cyprus is not a free state. All you have to say is that you do mind. Yeah, then you get a search warrant. Possibly. But that comes under the heading of legality, and your rights will still be fully protected. We believe in legality and justice. We learned about them from the British, even though sometimes they forgot about them themselves. Well, look around. You didn't see Morrison last night. I've told you, not since that day. Well, last night because we have found the pickup truck he was driving. It was here in Papas. 
parked in a street not more than 300 yards from this apartment. What else did his girlfriend say? Very little. Much less than she knows, I am certain of that, but about what? Then make her talk. What do you suggest, Mr. Collier? A rubber truncheon? <laughs> we'll keep her under observation. And the woman, Helene. Have you seen her since? Yes. Where? Here, three nights ago. At your invitation? Yes, of course. I put an ad in the personal column of the newspapers. Helene, longing to see you again, David. <laughs> and what did she want? You're interested in conversations with the Phantom? Well, no, then tell me. You've probably got a quotation to cover that, too. Mm. Okay. She wanted to explain why the Alfa Romeo wasn't where I left it. How it was that Harold Lambos was behind the bar of the Korean Palace that night and not the regular barman. And why the three of them ran away from the monastery the way they did. And uh, did she convince you? Mm -hmm. More or less. Uh, what else did she say? She insisted that my brother was murdered. I see. And, and this time, did she suggest any possible motive? No. These were found in your brother's belongings. Mm -hmm. What is this? I don't know. It's some kind of carving. Your brother took it? Yeah, I imagine so. Where? I'm the foggies. May I have it? Why? You think that might be important? <laughs> I, I don't imagine so, not for a moment, but... I'm interested in such things. May I? Yeah, why not? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you see? No briefcase. Uh. <laughs> No. Is that it, then? Well, for the time being, anyway, but until I give you the word, you won't leave Cyprus, oh, will you? the last time you couldn't wait to the back of me. Yes, well, I've changed my mind. Really? There's hope yet, then. You might end up by believing me. Wolf, wolf. Huh? The boy who cried wolf. Yeah, what's that got to do with Well, me? you cried wolf twice, oh. but the third time you didn't. What's the significance of that? Well, either that you learned a lesson, or perhaps I was wrong. And there are wolves about. Well, no, as I've already told you, last time I spoke to Morrison, he didn't appear to be worried about anything at all. And he denied having even spoken to David Collier, let alone having met him the same afternoon. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Paris. Now, may I ask... Is something wrong? Has there been some kind of new development? Yes. Morrison has disappeared. And his disappearance is now the subject of an official inquiry. Mr. Priest. Looks like we've got a visitor. <clears throat> what is it, Travis? I'm sorry to disturb you, but uh, there's someone come on board who insists on seeing you. Oh, who? A priest, Martin Priest, remember? He hasn't met your party. Good evening, Mr. Helmer. Oh, of course I remember you. Good evening. What can I do for you? Now spare me a little of your time. In private. It's okay. Cashed in that lottery ticket yet, have you? So, Mr. Priest, how can I help you? Thank you. I'll have a large scotch and a very little soda. By all means, help yourself. 
Something for you? No, thank you. Not right now. Cheers. Mm. Very good scotch, this. I see you're a connoisseur. I like yourself. But sadly, the champagne tastes on beer money. You know how it is. <laughs> but then, of course, you don't, do you? I get the feeling that this isn't exactly a social call. Business. And pleasure. We have to have a little chat, you and I. Oh, do we? Mm-hmm. About what? This and that. Like antiquities, for instance. About $10 million worth, to be precise. You're wasting your time looking for Morrison. You won't find him. It was never Morrison you had to deal with anyhow, or Barry Collier. I'm the one who wrote to you. You wrote to me. No more games, Mr. Hellman. No more hide and seek. It's time we talk money. I received so many letters. Yes, well, this one wasn't signed, remember? And along with it, you got a set of photographs. Like these. Satisfied? Just as a matter of interest, uh, how did you find all this? We were making seismic tests using small explosive charges. When the dust cleared, bingo. And there was the way in. And Collier and Morrison just happened to be there. Worker ants, nothing more. Greedy little men. In a hurry and easily satisfied. But you're dealing with me now. Direct. And as far as I'm concerned, this money you gave Barry Collier is just a deposit, a down payment. You're going to have to come up with a hell of a lot more if you and I are going to do business. I don't even start listening till you're into seven figures. I'm afraid I don't understand. You clearly are laboring under a misapprehension, Mr. Priest. I never paid Barry Collier a cent for anything. No, it's the truth. When Collier first approached me, he had one of those sapphires with him. He asked me if I would be interested in purchasing it along with its twin. I told him that I would, and he said that the next night he would bring along the two stones. But sadly, on the following day, he met with uh, an accident. I never saw him again. So you see, that money is not mine. Morrison told me. Maybe. But I assure you, he was mistaken. Well, then where did Collier get it from? I would have thought that quite obvious, Mr. Priest. From another buyer. Ha, ha, ha. 